In the latest news, Fitchburg's own Dean Tran is sworn into the Senate by Governor Charles Bakers in a ceremony at the State House this week. The B.F. Brown Rehabilitation Project takes a step forward, and with the holidays fast approaching, winter weather threatens travel all around New England. We are live today as the first major storm of the season moves in. I'm Stephanie Allison, and this is Our City News. And now, the latest news, sports, and weather with Stephanie Allison and the entire Our City News team. First, in national news, crews are working to finish clearing the wreckage from a deadly Amtrak derailment that closed a portion of a busy freeway in Washington state. On Wednesday morning, a locomotive from the train was being removed from the scene of Monday's accident that spilled train cars onto Interstate 5, killing three and injuring dozens. The wreck closed the southbound lanes of Interstate 5 south of Tacoma during the busy holiday travel period. The Washington State Department of Transportation says it will reopen the freeway lane as soon as possible. Federal investigators trying to determine the cause of the wreck want to know why the train was traveling more than double the posted speed limit when it went off the tracks. Authorities have identified the third man killed in the deadly Amtrak derailment in Washington state. The Pierce County Coroner's Office said Wednesday that 40-year-old Benjamin Gran of Auburn, Washington died of multiple traumatic injuries in the train accident. 61-year-old Jim Hammer and 35 Five-year-old Zach Wilhoit were also killed in DuPont, Washington crash. Our city news was at the state house on Wednesday as local resident and former city councilor Dean Tran was sworn into the Massachusetts State Senate. Glenn Fossa has the story. Glenn, I swear to solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I support the Constitution of the United States. Congratulations. Our city news at the State House right after the new Senator, Dean Tran, has been uh, sworn in right here in the Governor's Council. Dean, this is a story about America. It's a story about dreams, and it's a story about your success thus far. Um, what do you have to say to your constituency, obviously the work ahead, and the folks that may be looking up to Dean as a mentor? Well, I think if anyone who says that the American dream is no longer exists, um, I'm, a, I'm a fine example of that. Um, I was born in a different country, a war-torn country, a communist country, and uh, immigrated to the United States in 1980. Uh, graduated from uh, Fitchburg High School in 1993, then went on achieving my bachelor's at uh, Brandeis University at, in 1997. Uh, then was elected to the city council um, in 2006 and now um, became the uh, state senator for the great commonwealth of Massachusetts. So the American dream is alive and well, and it's achievable through hard work and commitment. The governor, of course, gave you a path to the seat today, and of course there's work ahead, and uh, there's some synergy now with the economic development. Uh, what's going to go on uh, with the governor's agenda as well? I think it's great that I have a great uh, relationship with the governor. He'll be in the district uh, more often now, uh, as well as uh, I have a, established a great relationship with the uh, surrounding local um, elected officials, including Mayor Dean Natale, Mayor Hawk, as well as uh, Mayor uh, Mazzarella. And together we'll make um, the district great. We'll bring great things uh, and uh, work towards making the district a, uh, a great place for people to come, live, raise family, and uh, enjoy their lives. Our City News at the State House. After a major blaze last year, the B.F. Brown School Project is seeing new light. The city has made progress on an insurance settlement that will mean much needed repairs to the burned out roof of the 1920s school building. The New View Development Organization is looking to raise funding to convert the now closed school into artist housing that would complement the city's art museum. Aiden Horgan spoke to Fitchburg Mayor Steve DiNatale about the latest development and has the story. Thanks, Stephanie. I'm in front of the BF Brown building that had a fire over a year ago. And just this week on Tuesday night, City Council approved a motion to take the insurance claim of $1.8 million from Maya, the insurance company for Fitchburg. I got a chance to speak with Mayor Di Natale about this. A $1.8 million figure was, uh, was presented to the mediation panel, and uh, they in turn will take that to their uh, board of directors, Maya's board of directors for a decision on uh, January 18th. Uh, we're hoping for a positive outcome from that. So, 
Excellent. And your office and your attorney and the city solicitor, Vinny Pusateri, right. was working on the negotiations, and he's the one that actually got this sum? That's right. Uh, he did an outstanding job, as usual, uh, along with, actually, uh, uh, A.J. Terigny, my uh, chief of staff. They both attended the uh, mediation uh, 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 proceedings. And uh, so we're, we're, uh, we're, we're happy with the outcome. Uh, we're you know, obviously keeping our fingers crossed that the board agrees in January to uh, to accept uh, uh, that offer of 1.8, mm-hmm. and then we'll move forward from there. So what's the plan to use this money? The, before, the plan was with New View Communities and mm-hmm. Fitchburg Art Museum right. to open up studio apartments for artists, yeah. professional artists. Is that plan still going through? Well, I, I know New View is still, uh, you know, focused on that, and uh, myself as a... Uh, as the uh, the chief executive officer of the city, I'm I'm uh, uh, in line with that thinking. I, I would like to see us move forward with that project. I know Fitchburg State University is involved in this as well, and they're uh, uh, you know they're driving in the same direction that we are. So uh, uh, again, this will be a decision that the council will have to make uh, in how those. Uh, how those funds will be uh, will be spent. So uh, that, that's really, uh, uh, you know, uh, within their purview to make that decision. Excellent. So. Could you tell me some details about the actual damage to the building and what actual renovations that this money will go to? Yeah, if if we move forward with uh, with uh, the initial plan, uh, we would replace the roof. Those funds would be used to replace the roof, and. Uh, I'm not sure where uh, uh, the rest of that funding would go, but it's uh, most of it will be taken up with the roof itself because that was the uh, uh, generally the most of the damage was the roof. Okay. So, so this Tuesday vote was a huge hurdle, and as you said, the, we're still waiting for a the meet Maya. Maya it still has a board of directors vote on January 18th, That's so right. we still have a hurdle ahead. Why has the city gotten? Five hundred thousand yeah. still. Well, that was the uh, considered to be the actual cash value of the building, okay. and uh, uh, there's a, uh, a little more complication uh, when uh, in, in discussing that. That uh, nothing, nothing uh, uh, that that's not uh, appropriate, but. It's just uh, their percept, their consideration, and their position was that that's what the actual cash value of the building was. So, uh, uh, and, and we, of course, uh, uh, we disputed that, and that was where the mediation came in, and right. uh, and we moved forward with that. I'm happy to say that uh, the executive director of Maya, which happens to be Jeff Beckwith, who I've known for a number of years in uh, in being in the legislature. Um, he was uh, uh, gracious enough. I reached out to him in, in making the mediation uh, process to accelerate it. I mean, we could still be sitting here uh, six months from now if, uh, if he didn't agree to do that. Uh, but reaching out to him, he, uh, he acted on, on behalf of uh, a municipality that's a member of Maya, and he understood after a conversation with me, the importance of moving forward with the uh, with a decision on that. So he agreed, and uh, uh, we thank him for that. Excellent. So, what does this mean for not just BF Brown Building, but for the whole project of reimagining North of Maine and reinvigorating the economy in Fitchburg as a whole? Yeah, I mean that's that's uh, uh, you know that building and that project is uh, part and parcel of what we're hoping and what we're driving toward doing on Main Street with uh, new City Hall, the renovated City Hall, the Bank of America building, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Performing Arts Center across the street, the old Fitchburg uh, uh, Theater block with Fitchburg State University. So uh, that's going to really energize that whole area. And uh, so it's a, it's every everything is tied into each other you know they're all uh, you know they're all uh, coordinated and uh, and uh, the, the end result will be a, a much greater uh, foot traffic and interest in downtown and uh, will uh, you know will uh, benefit from that thanks Aiden we look forward to seeing the progress as the development of BF bound project continues 
We'll be right back after this with your local weather. You're watching Our City News on FATV. Filling in for Edgar Davis, who's off on holiday. Here's your local weather. Today, Friday, December 22nd, winter storm Dillon will blanket parts of the northeast with a combination of snow, sleet, and freezing rain. Some significant ice accumulations are possible in parts of the interior northeast Friday and Saturday. This will lead to some challenging pre-Christmas travel for many holiday commuters. Winter storm Dillon is turning its wintry focus on parts of the northeast with a mix of snow and ice just in time for holiday travel through Saturday. Winter storm warnings have been posted for parts of upstate New York and northern New England. And winter weather advisories cover much of the rest of New England and New York State and beyond. We can expect a winter mix with more accumulation in our area than it is expected to turn into an icy mix. The rain snow line will be hovering right over our area here in Fitchburg as the storm progresses. Expect a slow commute as the storm lingers into the day tomorrow. Snowfall totals are in the three to five inch range before the changeover. Glenn Fossa is out on the FATV weather deck. What are the conditions out there, Glenn? Out on the weather platform, the winter weather upon us, of course, and travel very, very carefully on this holiday season. Right now, temperatures dropping here in Fitchburg. No more accumulation, but the roads will be slick as the temperature drops right here on Route 12 outside FATV Studios. With winter weather upon us, Unitil reminds us to keep a few things on hand. Flashlights with fresh batteries, a battery-operated clock radio, bottled water, canned foods with a manual can opener, a list of important phone numbers, a cell phone charger for your car, and a first aid kit. To report an outage, call the toll-free number 1-888-301-7700 or report it online at www.unitil.com slash report outage. The Sentinel and Enterprise is reporting another major renovation project getting underway right here in the city. Fitchburg's officials broke ground Thursday on what will become an $8 million project at the former Sanitoy factory just off of River Street. The massive space will be turned into offices and light manufacturing. Demolition of a portion of the current structure will allow for plenty of parking at the complex. Several major tenants have already expressed an interest in relocating to what will be a completely renovated building. Tenants on board already include Monachusett Opportunity Council and several state offices as well. This will continue the revitalization of the River Street area on the heels of the recent yarn mill apartment project and road improvements in the area. Tech analysts and angry customers have reported in recent days that operating system updates have caused older iPhones to slow considerably, with some suggesting that Apple could be using the tactic to encourage fans to buy new phones. Apple insists the updates were made with a different goal in mind. It said performance of the lithium-ion batteries degrades over time, which can sometimes cause phones to suddenly shut down in order to protect their components. The company said its software updates for iPhone 6, 6S, SE, and 7 are designed to smooth out peak power demands, preventing these surprise shutdowns and ultimately prolonging the lifespan of the batteries. But the updates can also lead to 
disappointing speeds. Apple said in its statement that it will continue to use the feature with other products in the future. The revelation sparked an outcry among Apple fans, with some suggesting they might switch to rival Samsung. New developments in a local homicide investigation in Gardner, Mass. have just come in. Glenn Fossa has the story. Stephanie, Worcester County DA's office, Joe Early, releasing this just yesterday afternoon on the murder of 56-year-old Randy Valancourt from Gardner. A uh, defendant now, Matthew Vania, 33 of Gardner, charged in that murder. He had been previously charged and held on 7,500 cash with misleading police, but now is charged with murder, assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, and other charges. Arthur Haley, the judge at Gardner District Court, holding him on no bail on those charges at this time. We'll be right back with more from Our City News on FATV. Hello and welcome to FATV, Fitchburg Access Television. Each week we take pride in providing some of the best public access television programs in New England. From FATV live sporting events, city meetings, and school functions, to weekly shows such as Barbara and Youth, Inside and Discussing Fitchburg, Sports Weekly, Weekly Wellness, and Our City. Our dedicated staff of industry professionals and hardworking volunteers is here each week working behind the scenes, making it all happen. Besides on air, our programming is also shown live online, where you can see our shows in beautiful high definition. You can also search through our archive of past shows and watch anytime at your leisure. But did you know you can also be part of the action? Become a member of FATV, and you gain access to all the equipment, studio space, and classes that FATV has to offer. You can create your own show, volunteer for exciting live events in our studio, or all around the city in our high-quality mobile broadcast truck. The possibilities are endless. For a small fee, you can become an individual member. Or for a little more, you and a group of friends can become part of a rising trend in the future of television. From sports shows to news shows, civic events, and talk shows, you can be in the driver's seat by directing and even starring in your own production. Also, students are free. FATV staff can assist you by getting your new show up and running with professional industry standard equipment. TV studio time, and private editing suites. All you need are friends to help out. And before you know it, you will be on the air. So if you have a great idea for a TV show and want to share it with the world, stop by 175 Kimball Street, Fitchburg, for a free tour of our facility. You can also contact us at 978-343-0834 or email us at info at fatv.org. Fitchburg Access Television, working together for a stronger community. Life expectancy in the U.S. has declined for the second year in a row as the opioid crisis continues to ravage the nation. It's the first time in a half a century that there have been two consecutive years of declining life expectancy. Researchers at the National Center of Health Statistics found that drug overdoses killed over 63,000 Americans in 2016, an increase of 21% over the previous year. Americans can now expect to live to 78.6 years, a decrease of a tenth of a year. The U.S. last experienced two-year decline in a row in 1963 during the height of the tobacco epidemic and amid the wave of flu. Widely available prescription painkillers opened the gates for a new universe of legal and illegal opiate abuse beginning in about 1999. 
The number of Americans killed by overdose has increased each year since then. As of 2015, more than half a million Americans have died from a drug overdose. One local corporation, along with the Masons, are doing their part to help out those in need during the holidays. Stopping by a Fitchburg school this week to bring a little seasonal cheer. Glenn Fossa has the story. Our city news is back to Rheingold Elementary School, where more giving takes place. Avery Dennison, the company we're all familiar with in our office, and Carl with me from the Masons. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Sherry, this is a great opportunity to give at the giving season, and we're here at Rheingold. Tell us a little bit about Avery Dennison's community commitment to this season? Uh, well, Avery Dennison really prides itself on being uh, a sponsor for the community. Uh, we feel like a big family, and it's really important for us uh, to make sure that the community knows that they're a family, too. And Rick, uh, Avery Dennison, a, a very, very big company, but uh, not too big to give to smaller communities and the smaller population right here at Wrangell. Absolutely. absolutely. When uh, it was brought to us as a uh, project, and we figured we could help out and the entire company basically embraced the, uh, the the concept and the project, and you can tell by the gifts that we, we brought. Uh, I think we can uh, even do better next year. Absolutely. <laughs> Masons and Freemasonry is uh, not a stranger to giving either, Kyle. This is a great partnership right here with Rheingold and Fitchburg Public Schools. Yes, and these kind of events can never take place without the help of the, communi- the uh, industry in this community. And uh, we're very pleased to partner up the Avery Dennison Company with, with uh, the Rheingold School, and, uh, and we look forward to keep this partnership going. Excellent. At Ryan Gold School, this is our city news. And now throwing it over to Matt Carroll with the FATV Sports Report. Hi, my name is Matt Carroll. Today is December 21st, 2017, and this is the FATV Sports Report. We start with local sports and basketball. Boys size of school losing a tough one, 70 to 40 against St. Mary's in Worcester. Their next game will be December 22nd at home. Girls size of school also losing to St. Mary's, 42 to uh, 20. Their next game will be home at 2 p.m. Boys Red Raiders play Amherst tomorrow night at 7 p.m. They look to bounce back after a tough loss against Wachusett. Girls won't be in action again until after Christmas on December 29th where they'll play rival, rival Lemonster Blue Devils at 5.30 in Lemonster. St. Bernard's girls lose last night 50-44 to against Sutton. The boys win against Gardner, 82 to 65. High scoring game there. The boys are now 3 and 0 on the season. Their next game will be be in Lemonster, af- also after uh, Christmas on December 27th at 6:30. Monty Tech girls win Tuesday night against the Advanced Math and Science School, 52 to 40. Their next game will be Neshoba Valley, 6:30 home tomorrow. Boys also played the Advanced Math and Science School Tuesday. They win 45 to 29. Their next game will be tonight on the road in Narragansett at 7 p.m. Hockey Red Raiders winning five to nothing Monday night against Littleton, but lose on last night against Lunenburg five to four. They look to bounce back over the weekend uh, against Northbridge in Northbridge, December twenty third at eight ten p.m. St. Bernard's wins last night over Asbit four to two. They are now two zero oh, and one on the season. We now go to track. Fitchburg wins a tight meet against Marlboro, 46 to 45. That was scored. It came down to the end when football standout Figueroa, Tucker, Sadler, and Ashmore ran a relay time of 139. We now go to Pro Sports. Celtics win Monday night in a tight game, 112 to 111 against the Indiana Pacers. They dropped one last night, though, in a very tight game. It came down to the end. Kyrie missing the last shot off the front rim against the Miami Heat. They lose that one 90-89. They look to bounce back tonight on the road in New York against the Knicks. Hockey Bruins win 3 to nothing on Tuesday night against the Buffalo Sabres. Their next game tonight will be on the road at Winnipeg. NFL, some big games over this uh, upcoming weekend. Games on Saturday and Sunday. Patriots play on Sunday against the Buffalo Bills at 1 p.m. 
Another big game in a game that most of the nation will be looking at is the Falcons and the Saints. You have a tight race in the NFC South with the Falcons, Saints, and Carolina Panthers. This game could really solidify that movement towards the playoffs and winning that division. Again, this is Matt Carroll, and this is the FATV Sports Report. Thanks, Matt. We have a little break in weather right now, but more precipitation is on its way. Glenn is over at the DPW yard seeing how things are going over there as we get ready for more wintry weather. Glenn? Fitchburg Department of Public Works getting ready, of course, for this storm incoming. Uh, with me, Gary Withington, the street superintendent. Uh, excellent to see you today, Gary. Over 50,000 tons of sand come in in order for you to be prepared each year for this. Uh, a lot of work. Yes, it is. I mean, it takes us probably two months to make all that sand, and then we have to haul from our pit to here every, you know, every day during the winter. Of course, the guys are busy at work. We can see that happening. The ladies as well. Uh, so there's salt, there's sand, and of course, uh, any messages for those. Of course, we have the parking ban, messages for citizens, how they can help Department of Public Works do a better job on the streets. Yes, this, uh, please don't park on the streets at night and also take your time driving around. Yeah. And uh, it's great to see you. Of course, this is a holiday season. All of your folks working hard because uh, these are the unsung heroes. We always think about the police and the fire and the EMS, but these guys are putting in long days. Yeah, we expect to be here from now till sometime about noontime tomorrow. And then we'll be back here on Christmas Day probably. Our City News, back to you. And this weather is not over, of course. All of our good friends at the Fitchburg Department of Public Works doing a great job. And whatever you can do to assist them by keeping the cars uh, off of the road and and out of their way. Additionally, you want to keep your sidewalks clear and have plenty of salt and sand for your walkways to stay safe. Back to you, Stephanie. This week on FATV. Tuesday at 7 p.m., Barbara and you Christmas music special. Wednesday at 7 p.m., discussing Fitchburg Now. Thursday at 11.30 a.m., Sports Weekly, a year in review. Friday at 3 p.m., King of the Palace. Thanks for watching this episode of Our City News. This episode is brought to you by KCMC Management, our local Dunkin' Donuts. From all of us here at Our City News and FATV, whatever you may celebrate, have a happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Stay snowy, Fitchburg.